so here's here's a question for you and this came up when um when i was uh reading through again reading through a uh, birthright by timothy operino and then just in talks that i've seen with him and a little bit of what we discussed but you have this moment inside revelation 9 and this is when uh we have um people being stung by these by these chimeras that have come out of the pit now and uh it says in verse five through six says and to them it was given that let me pull it up here it said to them it was given that they we hit it here here we go um and to them it was given that they should not kill them men um but that they should be tormented five months and their torment was the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and desire to die and death shall flee from them i wonder and i know tim is uh hypothesized hypothesized this as well that come this point in in the end time scenario that we will have essentially achieved a sort of pseudo immortality in sort of the uh the sleeve type sense that we see within altered carbon or the uh the ghost in the shell type sense where people are able to transplant consciousness into a body that doesn't die or that they have through receiving of the mark completely altered their dna like you and i once talked before so much so that they are no longer constituted as human and have this essentially undying body or at least undying and how we would think of it and they're going to want to seek death but be unable to because they have achieved that but that that realization and setting in of what they've done hits them where do you line up on that I think the first thing that I would uh, suggest is that the timing doesn't fit the mark of the beast. It's before the midpoint of the last seven years. Now, okay. the mark of the beast technology is put in place by Babylon. So you'll have that almost finished technology, but Antichrist will take it to, to a different level. So I would, that part I would, you know, sort of part on, but okay. the rest of it, is very very relevant for me in terms of how we understand that and they're not allowed to sting the people who have the seal of god on them so who are the people that have the seal of god on them um one is the 144,000 that are going to be part of preaching the gospel before the end comes in the first three and a half years the ones that are seen in heaven in revelation 14 before you get the summary summary of the major events in exact chronological order for the last three and a half years at oh uh um, play th revelation 16 through 19. and uh the rest i think though is is does that mean then that only the, they have that special seal so even if we're still here and i think we are i don't know other people think we won't be because this is um before the midpoint, but after the start of the last seven years, um, is that, uh, are we going to be stung by that if we're here? Hmm, and that's we a good question. The same thing. But as we read through the New Testament, our faith gives us that seal. So, you could, and, and I walk through, and I'll make that case in book two, that I think we'll be protected, but people who have fallen into Babylon, who are persecuting us at this time um, before the abomination uh, are the ones that are likely to to be stung and but they're not allowed to touch the grass or the earth and they're different than the beings in the army um, now what are these things so i think they're degraded watchers is what i think they are hmm. and i'll start and i'll start with uh we get these interesting creatures after the flood and then they kind of disappear and then we see them in isaiah 13 with the destruction of babylon and then isaiah 34 the destruction at armageddon things like dragons and stuff like that but particularly the satyrs as sair as it is in hebrew these are devil goat, goat demons <laughs> yeah it, azazel is degraded to a goat god he was a seraphim before these are yeah. degraded seraphims so what are these scorpion beings that are different than a goat god but the analogy would be a satan can be degraded from his great status to satan's status and whatever that look is um and uh, seraphim angels can be degraded to satyr goat god status 
then can other watchers be degraded? And could they be another kind of watcher? And so I think, and I make the case in that they're likely um, cherubim watchers hmm. as degraded. And uh, when we look at the cherubim, these are uh, beings that are, you know, they were used to pr protect temples, to protect palaces, and to protect uh the portals to hades and sheol from, from from the occult perspective and that they're also warrior type of uh destructive and they're, they're set outside of eden to protect anybody from going into eden and so these if we start to look at the types of cherubim that are out there we get four different heads right so with the anunnaki that are shown in in the middle east you have this eagle head these wings and these stout bodies and they're doing some sort of ritual around some sort of technological tree some people call it the tree of life you have identical reliefs only with human heads well a cherubim has a head of an eagle it has a head of a human it has a head of a lion and it has a head of a bull or an ox depending on how you want to define that and they would typically take one of those faces when they took a physical form on this earth so you see those anunnaki watchers that are described as um uh, an eagle-faced or a falcon or a bird-faced anunnaki watcher and a human one that looks a lot like gilgamesh uh, which is another thing I start to get into in book two as well. <laughs> and what's interesting about these eagle-faced ones, they're grouped in by some researchers with a group that we would understand, and they're known by different names and different religions around the world. But the in the uh, Sumerian religion, they're grouped with different kinds of the Gurdabalu, or their Akrabamalu. And what's interesting is that word akrabamalu is the same word for scorpion in Hebrew, akrab, as the first hmm. part. And these are scorpion beings that are coming out of the, uh, the pit prison. Now, in the polytheist version of prehistory, the parent gods who ruled before the flood versus the offspring gods that rule after the flood, uh, goddesses in the Sumerian tradition, keeping it the same analogy and mythos in Sumeria, creates all sorts of different creatures, accordingly, accord, and including these scorpion beings hmm. um, that were, was created to protect um, themselves from the offspring gods so they wouldn't overthrow them or kill them. And they had the ability to destroy the earth. And I put a description of these Akrabamalu in one column in one of my chapters in, in book two, and then the Akrabamalu and, or, and the uh, scorpion beings in Revelation 9 in the other column, and they are identical descriptions. Wow. So these are some sort of gods come from the parent gods, and typically in how they ascribe different orders and ranks and stuff is... Uh, is their offspring of the parent gods, right? Well, possibly, but, you know, we have ranks and orders of different kinds of angels, and so the cherubim and the ophanim and the archangels and the seraphim, they're all in, in the presence around the throne, and they're all created by God. So I think it's kind of an allegorical um, interpretation on how these different types of orders show up that don't come from God. To keep them separate from God in that in that religion, so they're and these linking it back to the cherubim eagle faces. This is the third set of that same set of beings, according to some of the ancient researchers. And I think what we're seeing is these degraded cherubim that come out of uh, the pit prison that that are that are doing this far out. So, but it's a it's a stunning comparison when you get there in, into the book. Yeah, and, and you you're you're correct there. I was I was off by four chapters because you're right. The mark of the beast doesn't show up till Revelation thirteen. Um, 
goodness. So we only have a few minutes left here and, um, sort of like, I guess one kind of final thought that I have here is, um, because we talked about the, the immortality that is our spirit, how it lives on and how it's sort it sort of is almost like this timeless thing. If indeed we are, um, in existence from before those foundations of the world where Jesus Christ, he says, you know, I called you from the foundations of the world. I knew you placed my name upon you as it were. Uh, actually, I, I sort of proposed this, this thought uh, when I was doing a show with Arthur Nix and it was sort of a, a thought experiment in the sense of if we understand that we, we were in existence before God said, let there be light we were in existence before this world was created in existence before people even finally took their final their first steps on earth then we have this relationship with jesus christ we have this understanding um when he when he says i knew you uh i looked up that that word and in the greek it is to know by experience to have an experiential understanding of whoever is being known so we have this pre-existing relationship and it makes me wonder if back before before creation if we have this relationship and he he pulls us aside individually you know one at a time and says hey just so you know i've got to send you on down to this planet that i'm creating i've got to send you into this world and you're not going to have any recollection of me you're not going to remember any of this you're not going to have any prior knowledge whatsoever you're going to be there and i'm going to present you with the opportunity to choose me or to not choose me and you'll have as, however much time as you're allotted on that earth to make that decision. And I really hope you choose me, but it's your free will choice. What happens at, you know, say, say we have that prior knowledge and then suddenly, you know, we all come to the end of our life as everybody does. And then all of the, all of the, the cloudiness and the shroud that might be before our mind is suddenly lifted and we're boom endowed with, with knowledge and understanding like we've never had before. And suddenly, boom, it comes slamming back into people. Oh my gosh, I had a relationship with Christ before he said, let there be light. And I, I didn't choose you. I didn't choose you. I knew you, but I didn't choose you. And they're now faced with that understanding and reality for the rest of eternity. Um, as Chuck Missler put it, hell is being completely and utterly hopeless, no hope whatsoever, but to then sit with that pain and that understanding of, wow, I knew you, but I didn't make that choice. Um, to quote Chuck again, one of the things he was fond of saying is, People won't be in hell because of their sin. They'll be in hell for rejecting the provision that God's made for their sin. And just throughout, you know, the the conversation we've had tonight, we, we've really delved very heavily into that spiritual realm, uh, the understanding of of beings that operate on on dimensions and planes that we can't even imagine. But to you know, to have that possibility that we were once there as well, with this experiential understanding of Christ, it sort of puts it puts a, a much heavier weightiness on. I know at least for myself, when I imagine that, that possibly being the case, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Um, but that, that's sort well, of where I'd like. Certainly, it's certainly possible um, because we don't get scripture on that, um, that, we're, that I'm aware of. Um, but what we do know is, is that um, the word created all things, all beings, at the command of God. So even the angelic order is according to Colossians 1. And so he would know each individual spirit as the mm. creator of all the beings. Now, whether or not there is a conversation with any of those beings, angelic or human, um, we're not told that. Um, yeah. And my only foundation for that is and Ephesians. If, and if, yeah, and if yeah, no, and I was just sit, just to finish, and if to have total free choice, you couldn't have that knowledge, and you would all have to be created in the same way with the same instructions, including the angels. 
Yep. Or that and that's choice. And that's why I say like we like like you oh. rightly said we don't have any founding for that. All we have is that verse uh, Ephesians one four where it says for he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his presence and love. And it kind of that seems to me to all, all sort of because we're all created perfect, right? Yeah, and it seems to me that that fits very well with the idea that all of our names are put down in that Lamb's Book of Life initially, and then through yeah. our choice, it's either kept there or yeah. blotted out. Yeah, and, huh. you know, so, and you know, it's 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 one of those interesting uh, speculative things to talk about for sure. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know, um, but uh, we all wake up and we have to find our own way. Uh, in this world and it sort of goes to one of my core sort of you know beliefs is that we should learn everything we can to make an intelligent decision because mm -hmm. no decision is still a decision and whether it, you know I, I go on a lot of shows and I'll tell because I do a lot of shows that aren't Christian I say I'm not here to convert anybody I'm here to give you information because everybody needs to search this out whether you choose to become a Buddhist, to become atheist. I'm here to supply information. I hope with the information that I provide that you're going to look at the Bible and to start your path to God. But you're here to make your choice. I'm just here to give you information. So I encourage people to dig deep and, and to make intelligent decisions on these things. And the thing is, is we don't know everything. And that's part of our different existence than what the angels had. Not that the angels knew everything, because they didn't know about the resurrection, as First Corinthians talks about, unless they wouldn't have had Jesus crucified. Yeah, um, yeah right. And <laughs> so they don't know everything, but they they did know God intimately and reported to them him on a regular basis, and yet they still rebelled for some reason. So uh, it's 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 interesting uh, discussion for sure, but I try and try and focus more on what we do know than what we don't know. Yeah, so. <laughs> fair, fair.